بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمد وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب So today what I'm going to talk about is very sensitive and may hurt a lot of people's feelings and uh, may cause people to be angry at me but it seems to be the truth and the reason to talk about this truth is because it's as it's an important enough of an issue that until we the muslim ummah and particularly in this case that also applies to the muslim ummah because the same thing is happening across the board but until the people of Pakistan don't wake up, nothing will change. In Allah, لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Allah doesn't change your people until they change themselves. And the first step to change yourself is to come to reality, to come to the truth. That's the first step to change. If somebody is able to deceive you, if somebody is able to do dajal to you, to de deceive you, you'll never change. You'll think everything is fine. And as you know, in in the world, the world establishment, you know, you could say the world establishment, part of its arm is the media. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this media. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. But despite all this media, people are still coming to Islam, still people see the truth, still people disregard what the media is saying, so on and so forth, okay? This recent thing that happened, you know, with the thing where you had to put this in your arm, right? This is a good example of that. Despite everything the media did, people still see the truth, okay? Forget about that. Let's come to Pakistan. So, that country that was made in the name of Islam, so-called in the name of Islam, uh, has been in bed with uh, the state of Israel for a very long time and I want to discuss one recent event that has happened. Let me first in general mention why the military of any country for that matter, why nationalism and military are interrelated and how people become blind. People are taught to love their countries even though what we should love in Islam is the Khilafah and what we need to establish is Khilafah, not nationalistic countries. Everyone thinks their country is the best. Okay? And everyone uses Quran and Hadith to say their country is the best. There are Hadith on how good Yemen is. There's a Hadith about how good Syria is. There's a Hadith about and events about Egypt. There are events about uh, the Indian subcontinent and what the Prophet has said about Khurasan. Everybody, uh, you know, the Prophet has said good things about Turkey. The Prophet has said good things about a lot of things but we become we use the deen to become nationalistic and we look down on other muslims from other places especially the arabs do this and then the indopak people do this they think they're better muslims than everyone else but they're doing exactly the same thing or worse than everyone else and the thing that makes the military uses to make people blind is the curse the curse of Asabiya, which the Prophet cursed, the curse of, 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 of nationalism and tribalism. The Prophet cursed it. He disliked it. And this is exactly the poison and the addiction and the good feeling of tribalism. And we're better than others. And our, our army is better than others that, you know, that, uh, that our militaries have used in the Muslim country, uh, to, to fool the people of what the real agendas are, okay? So, uh, as a result of this. Now, I also want to show you how people play with the media, okay? So, this is a Jewish newspaper, okay? So, what is happening in the world, what recently happened is Pakistan took part in a military exercise with Israel and with other countries in order to show defiance to Russia. Shame on Pakistani 
military, if I may say so, for doing that. No matter what the capacity was, Pakistan and Turkey and other Muslim countries took part in this to show opposition to Russia, which itself is a problem because at a time where there's a conflict between the U.S. and Russia, at a time where Russia had fired shots uh, to a British boat to tell them to stay away from our uh, our waters, our territory, our and in the Black Sea, at that time they do this military exercise and Pakistan is now going to be seen on the na side of NATO and the Black Sea Alliance. Okay? I'm not even talking about that. That's not even... That's, that's the lesser of the two problems that I'm dealing with. Let me show you what I want to bring out to the uh, Pakistani people. The top advisor to Pakistan's Prime Minister held secret meetings in Israel. Sayyid Zulfikar Bukhari flew to the Jewish state. Now, who's saying this? It's a Jewish newspaper. Jewish News is saying this. Top advisor of Pakistan's Prime Minister held secret meetings in Israel. Okay. Now, he comes home and people ask him, did you go to this meeting in Israel? And he totally denies it, right? He says, no way. Uh, he puts, uh, he says, a funny bit is Pakistani newspaper says, I went to Israel based upon Israeli news source. And now Israel is discussing this, that he came and met us. And yet, uh, what is happening is what? Is that he's saying in Pakistan he didn't meet us. So they see, this looks makes us look so silly. Okay? And it's not one report. It's not two reports. India has talked about this. Israel has talked about this. Other countries have talked about this. It's out there. It cannot be hidden. Do not go to... Do not go to Israel. Funny bit is Pakistani newspaper says, I went, I went to Israel based upon a Israeli news source. So he's saying, Pakistani newspaper says, I went to Israel based upon a Israeli news source. An Israeli newspaper says, I went to Israel based on a Pakistani news source. Wonder who this imaginative Pakistani source is. Okay, so he didn't answer the question of uh, if he went to uh, Israel or not, he, uh, he, he, instead of answering the question, I did not go to Israel, he says this. And this is in the field of psychology. Uh, this type of avoiding the question is usually seen as a negative sign, by the way. Okay. And so, you know, he, uh, but a report in Israel, Hayim said Bukhari met with foreign ministry officials as well as Mossad director. Yossi Cohen in Tel Aviv in order to pass on pa messages from Prime Minister Khan and Army Chief of Staff Qamar Javed Bajwa. Another source confirmed to Jewish News that the meeting in Israel held had been the subject of further discussion in Pakistan after it took place. That yes, Pakistan officials did go and meet in Israel. And why did they meet in Israel? Okay. One of the reasons to meet was, here's the same news, Times of India, senior advisor to Pakistan, PM Imran Khan, secretly visited Israel, met with Mossad chief. Okay, so uh, Israel, of course, is going to pick up on this. Uh, and, uh, of course, India is going to pick up on this because anything to cause disruption in Pakistan, they will generally do. Okay, but the issue is, did these meetings take place? And the answer is probably yes. You know why probably yes? Because uh, Israel and Pakistan just had military exercises in the Black Sea along with other Muslim countries, including Turkey. Uh, these military exercises one, were one of the issues being discussed. Okay, is one of the issues that were being discussed. So now let us continue, inshallah. Pakistan Navy took part in the Black Sea drill. Okay, and this Black Sea drill is one of the things that Israel was Part of. U.S. Sixth Fleet announces Sea Breeze uh, 2021 participation. So this was done as a revolt to who? As a revolt to Russia. Pakistani Israel Corporation necessary for regional security. So this is what the intelligentsia in Pakistan is uh, promoting. Okay, that uh, we need to be friends for regional security. 
and this is written by some guy named Ahmed Qureshi. Uh, Ahmed Qureshi writes, Pakistani Israeli corporation necessary for regional security. And as I already pointed out, it's the media that works on behalf of those who want to extinguish the light of Allah. Israel's interaction with the Arab and Muslim militaries is part of the growing trend whereby Israeli, Arab, and Muslim militaries find themselves quite quietly working together in multilateral exercises facilitated by Western powers. So here's the thing. They're doing these military exercises. What does that mean? You see, Pakistan is controlled by the military. Pakistan is controlled by the military. Why is Pakistan controlled by the military? Pakistan is controlled by the military because when the British left, okay, the thing that they had done internally, their structure, their infrastructure, the major arm, the biggest arm of their infrastructure that they left behind all these Muslim countries was the military aspect of it. So the British came, they trained the locals on how to, uh, how to be, they trained the locals on how to fight and so on and so forth and the military and the military was given the British curriculum, British learning, learning the English language, drinking alcohol, all of that, full training in all these Muslim countries, in, 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 you know, in all these Muslim countries, and then they left and they gave them their independence. But the control, the organized control was always in the hands of the military, is and has been in the hands of the military. Yeah, part of the military became Islamically religious and they had Islamic sentiments, but those that are actually in control, they are those that have nothing to do with Islam. And this is the thing the Pakistani community, the average Pakistani soldier who is like, I'm going to die to defend Islam and the Muslims, great. But you are putting your good intentions in the hand of people and in the control of people who work for the other side. This is the thing that the Pakistani people need to wake up to and to realize that the Pakistani military is not what it always makes itself out to seem. Okay, The Pakistani military is very Jewish in a sense. They know like they do in Israel and the current new prime minister they have in Israel. They know how to exploit religion for their own secular worldly purposes. Okay, and so uh, now let me show you uh, Okay, and so what? Uh, find themselves quietly working together in multilateral exercises. These are multilateral exercises facilitated by Western powers. Okay, and so, uh, you know, officers from Israel and eight majority Muslim nations joined the United Nations, the uh, United States led in NATO, NATO, which is anti, NATO was created to be anti Russia. Okay, so led. And NATO dominated sea breeze 2000, uh, 2021 military exercises that kicked, uh, that kick off in the Black Sea in the largest version of the drills since they started in 1997, co-hosted by Ukraine. Okay. So as you know, Ukraine has an issue with, uh, uh, with Russia. And so the Ukraine issue is being used by NATO to oppose Russia and Pakistan is part of that. Okay. Over 5,000 personnel. 50, 32 ships, 40 aircrafts, 18 commando teams, 32 countries are taking part. Okay. And then Pakistan is part of this. The Pakistani Israeli personnel meet again after nine years in the Black Sea. They were last part of the sea breeze in 2012, along with UAE. Israel's interaction with the Arab and Muslim countries is yet to expand, but is no longer, but no longer raises eyebrows. Israel, Turkey, and Azerbaijan have trained in the past, and security ties with Egypt, Jordan are robust. Israeli, Pakistani, Emirati, and it was UAE that has been telling Pakistan to make good ties with Israel, because they made the peace deal. Now, why should I be alone in the peace deal? You have to come with me, right? It's like when, you, when, you, when one person does a crime, he wants everyone around him to do the same crime. Right? Israeli, Pakistani, Emirati pilots have flown together in their red 
flag air force drills in the u.s in 2015 with the amarati and israeli pilots training again in greece in april 2021 uh last week a pakistani naval ship uh pns zulfikar the lead ship of the f-22p zulfikar class guided missiles uh, f- uh deployed in the red sea was in the vicinity of the israeli territory territory waters in the Aqaba port, joining the Royal Jordanian Naval Forces in Jordan's centennial celebrations, which included a joint drill in the area. But the venues where Pakistani and Israeli military representatives cross paths have multiplied in the recent years, especially after 2005, first formal Pakistan-Israeli foreign minister level meeting between uh, Salvan Shalom and Khurshid Khosrow in Istanbul. Okay. So the relationship between Pakistan and Israel is getting closer and closer. Okay, the chances of Pakistan and Israeli military representatives bumping to each other at military installations in Turkey, Azerbaijan, and China, China are high. Add UAE and Bahrain to the list. Both Gulf states are developing ties with Israel and enjoy a strong security relationship with Pakistan. So, Pakistani people should not be blind that not only is it uh, military uh, militarily uh, foolish to join activities that are counter to Russia because uh, th- there's no need for Pakistan to take on uh, a, a to make to make bad diplomatic relationships with someone that uh, that you don't have bad diplomatic relationships with massive exercise in the Black Sea with US coming after Russia warning so th- they had to gather 30 nations Pakistan was one of the nations and not only that, it's also silly because if you are on the blacklist, which you are, and if you think you're not, you're silly. You're, you don't know what you're talking about. If you think you're not on the blacklist of Israel, okay? I remember myself. Wallahi, I will tell you. I know the brother. He's an Azhari. His name was Zahir. He's Professor Zahir. He teaches in Pakistan, okay? Wallahi, wallahi. We went to the Ameri- I had the American passport. Two Pakistani brothers, they had the Pakistani passport. We went to the Israeli embassy to see if we can go to see Al-Aqsa, okay? If we can go to Jerusalem. He saw my passport, he's like, okay, you know, you go to the border and they'll take care of you. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. You ask uh, Professor Zahir. He took the passports, he threw the passports back. He threw the passports back. That's what they think of you. But what? You want to make good with them. You want to have good relationships with them. You want to be friends with them. He threw them back. Here, have this. But, you know, Pakistani Awam thinks they're military. Pakistan has the best military, so on and so forth. Ukraine, U.S. start Black Sea military drills despite Russian protests. And you know what's so silly about that? What is so silly about that? is that what um it also gives away the military power of each country right it gives away the military secrets of each country and so here it is pakistan under the leadership of the u.s in a nato alliance against russia pakistan is participating in this and allowing itself to be exposed and allowing itself to be exposed to the u.s to israel to all these other countries and then also giving a bad name for its own self for no reason at all to Russia, okay? Uh, joining forces, and then Turkey is no different. Turkey is in the same boat as Pakistan. But see, they want to make these heroes, right? They want to give us these fake heroes who are never going to be our heroes, okay? And we don't want your fake heroes. And so the Pakistani military should, should really do Tawbah, should really surrender to Allah, and uh, you know the breeze sea breeze 21 begins in the black sea after russia threatens to fire an intruding warships of uh, britain okay so uh exercise with 30 countries now just to give you an idea so you can see for yourself this is the uh let me show you the black sea here okay so they did this exercise now you see this is israel okay this is israel they did the exercise all around this area around Turkey. Now remember, the Prophet said Turkey will be invaded, right? The Prophet said 
Turkey will be invaded. And so I don't know if it will be uh, when there's finally a clash, if Russia will come and finally invade Turkey, or if the uh, NATO alliances themselves will invade Turkey because Turkey in the end sides with Russia. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen here. But this is what the Prophet told us. They are now doing military exercises along the Black Sea, okay, and going into the Mediterranean Sea, okay. So all the way from where Israel is, and ultimately this is for what? For the security of, uh, first and foremost, always comes Israel, right? So then uh, don't forget that, you know, in our past history, that, for example, and I'll just mention this, Right, the role of Pakistan's uh, General Ziaul Haq in the 1970s, the massacre of 12, 25,000 Palestinians in Jordan, when he was just a brigadier at that time, he uh, he slaughtered 25,000, and it may not have been 25,000, maybe the numbers are exaggerated, but Ziaul Haq did kill many, many Muslims to help Jordan and Israel. Okay, so let's not forget uh, the the not too far, not too distant uh, relationship uh, that uh, Israel uh, has had with Pakistan. Okay, and so uh, this is the the point here. The point here is the uh, the Pakistani people are in a in a two po in two edged sword situation. No country wants to. Because every country wants to see its army, its fighters, its soldiers as like mujahideen. They want to see their fighters, their army as like the the will of God, the hand of God, the protector on behalf of God, right? Lo and behold, if our army is sinning, then how is God going to help us against India or help us in the in the issues of Kashmir, which it hasn't helped us, you know, because we are sinning and the Pakistani army is sinning and the sincere people in the Pakistani army are just pawns for people who have alternative agendas, bigger agendas, and they have to listen and obey. And so those people in the Pakistani army have to listen to people who don't have the best of agendas. They were they were trained by the British. They do drink alcohol all night. They do have uh, negative belief systems about Islam. They do only keep secular people on top mostly, right? And so... Uh, so this this is the the situation uh, Pakistan finds itself in is that uh, it is getting closer and closer to Israel. Who cares about the like uh, Imran Khan said? Oh, if we accept Israel, then you know that puts us in a bad place with our stance on Kashmir because Israel has done the same thing that India has done uh, with the what India has done with the Kashmiri people is what Israel has done with Palestine. <coughs> No, it's more than that, because there's Al-Aqsa there. And the protection of Al-Aqsa and the sayings of the Prophet about Al-Aqsa, which I want to talk in more detail about another time. But this is much, Kashmir is as, as important as the lives of the Muslim blood is, but it is less important in terms of regional, uh, the, the, the Islamic uh, stance on this whole issue. Al-Aqsa is an important issue religiously and al-aqsa giving away al-aqsa is like saying to israel okay you become the world power okay so if pakistan accepts israel then they've said okay israel you lead the world okay because that's that's what's going to happen now uh, i want to end by so what can you do well what you could do if you're in pakistan you can start challenging the media you can start exposing the truth you could start telling the military challenging the military then why are there no religious people in your core why don't relig why religious people don't get promoted in pakistani military why don't the people who uh have religious uh feelings get promoted uh in, in the pakistani military why are there people on top that are drinking alcohol why are there people on top that are having secret meetings with israel and other countries why are there why is this all happening until you don't ask these questions, until you don't wake up, until you don't recognize that you're not organized under Muslims who care for Islam, you're organized under Muslims who actually dislike Islam. You're being organized and being used by people who have an alternative agenda. Okay, 
And so something, something, unless Toba is done, unless Toba is done, Pakistan is very much responsible because it can make a difference. But the reality is that the people in Pakistan don't trust Allah. The leaders in Pakistan, they don't trust Allah. And the leaders in Pakistan have no empathy, no care about the population. And they have no care about the concept of Ummah. And they have no care about the concept of we are a Muslim community. Okay, They have their own agendas. They will continue with their ties with Israel. They will continue to fool you into believing that they have uh, some Islamic aspirations. Right? Because every time uh, they use Kashmir to bring out the Islamic aspirations, they use India to bring out the Islamic aspirations. But in reality, they themselves, they are bought and sold and they have sold themselves to another group of people instead of selling themselves to Allah and His Messenger. And that is just a fact. And so now here it is, Pakistan is doing these joint military exercises with Israel. Okay. Pakistan is having secret meetings with Israel. That is a fact. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the people of Pakistan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the people of the leadership of Pakistan and the other Muslim countries to wake up and smell the coffee. Wake up and smell the coffee. Just wake up to reality. Because you think you, you're their friend today. But it's just a matter of time. You can never be friends with a snake. A snake will always bite. Even if you feed it, it'll still bite. A snake is still going to bite no matter how much and how long you take care of it. How much friendship you show to it. The moment it gets a chance, it will bite you. That's what a snake does. Everything acts according to their own nature. And the Muslim hypocrites, they don't understand this. Yes, ma'am,